you Langone. Are you uh, okay? I got, I got a wrist problem. Oh, okay. Uh, this isn't like brain cancer. cancer. Thing. No, okay, no, no. good. Cancer thing. I didn't want this to be like your final interview. Uh, no. And then like your family goes to watch it and it's me being like, so when you jerk off in the cum dries, do you flake it off or wash it off? And they're like, they're playing this at your memorial. I will remember. It's like, yeah, Louis was going to get the tumor the size of a grapefruit scanned in his brain. And Dan was going, hypothetical wrestling match. Eminem versus Taylor Swift. Um, yeah. Dude, I always. Have, Wait, what were you saying before that? About the thing. About what? Found, what? Oh no, we're recording now, dude. Oh man! All right, sorry. <laughs> yeah, when you, when you start the porn, you can't talk about. This really does feel more and more like a porn. This will always feel like a porn now because it's lights <laughs> with a couch. We have. To, I should have done a casting couch podcast. <laughs> where I go, so how long have you been doing comedy? And they go, That's really funny. Uh, like 10 years. <laughs> and you go, you ever podcasted before? And they go like, well, with my boyfriend all the time. <laughs> Do it net video girl style. Like, I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah. My, my sister's waiting for me outside. Yeah. I can't. Hey, they call me the podcast hunter. Like the milf hunter. Hey, you, hey, you want a podcast? And they go, I don't know. I got to get home to my husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, this one, it feels like because you're putting up lights this is a very like this isn't i know a lot of people have like props this is these are props that's why we're never fixing this listen to me <laughs> we're never fixing this because you have to take apart the whole goddamn bookcase i've said it before i'm gonna say it again but a lot of podcasts they just like this is just in an office somewhere and they like make a bookcase yeah this is your actual bookcase. Yeah, so this is a very personal... I play video games in here. I get angry for... I punch these tables because of video games. Right here, wow. <laughs> in fact, I broke one and I had to buy it. Ikea, 13 bucks. So if you want a rage table, go that way. But... So uh, shout out Sumner, one of my uh, college friends. I was visiting him in Portland mm -hmm. and he bought... This is before the pandemic. He bought all these old school cards, football cards, basketball cards and he's like when i'm bored i sit around and i open trading cards from like the late 80s and mm -hmm. just it's like something to do and it's fun he's like it barely cost me any money to buy these because all these people saved cards thinking they're going to be worth they're not worth anything not most of them like wow. occasionally like a jordan rookie card that's in i'm sure card traders are like he's fucking wrong but <laughs> whatever he gave me a box of nba cards from 1989 Shit. and so at the end of every episode you get to open it. We get to go through. Thanks. You're not really a big sports not guy. Not a sports guy. That's what makes this fun. Okay. Because I want to know who you know and okay. who you don't know. Okay, let's see. And then we can also go through the cards and see what you think about this person. Is there still, is there gum in There's here? There's no gum. I wish okay. there would have or else I would have made everyone eat it. That was going to be the rule. <laughs> okay. First, so, we got So flip is, it around. How is it? Flip. Oh, yeah. There you go. Perfect. Should I show it to the camera? No, just, you can tell me who it is, and I'll show it to the camera. First, we got, this is crazy, that it's just this guy named Michael Fratello, and he's in a suit. I don't know what that is. So he's the coach of the Hawks. Okay. Michael Fratello, born February 24th, 1947 in Hackensack, New Jersey, went to Montclair State, also in the great state of New Jersey, <laughs> and coached Atlanta. He was 0-3 his first season in 80-81. But then worked up to, f oh, man, he got good as they went on. If you're a Hawks fan, I, I wonder if you remember Coach Fratello. What's fun is when this episode comes out, uh, you'll have people being like, you don't know Coach, coach Fratello? Fratello? Really? And you're like, I don't know. Just learned about him. But you opened a coach first, which I, is very I, telling of you. It feels really weird. Like, this is a, this is a sports thing. There's a little yeah. Italian guy in a suit. I don't know what's happening. He's like, guys, <laughs> you fucking don't. These blacks, they can jump through the roof, but they need instruction. He's like stereotypically Italian. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll coach him to the end of the world, but I will not let them date my sister. Hey, uh, I'll coach Fratello. <laughs> what do you want? I got a, I got a big ZD in the locker room. They say the pasta fucking slows them down. <laughs> Who else you got? I got Tom Garrick for the Clippers. This is like, so that's like decades before the Clippers renaissance. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, they really sucked in 1989. The Clippers, it's kind of like... um. Like a gentrified neighborhood, but of a sports team. Yeah. Where you're like, what? But this is good now? Like, yeah. people like this? This is crazy. Oh, you Compton know? has got good restaurants. <laughs> you just know it from like saying everything. Like, yeah. you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens sometimes. Like in Denver near Mile High Stadium for a while, it was just like, you know, kind of like uh, not the greatest. Yeah. It wasn't like horrible, but it wasn't the greatest. And now it's like bougie to be like, oh, yeah. are you going by? They like changed the name of it and stuff. 
I bet. I mean, Denver's like gone nuts with all that. It's shit, crazy. Hasn't all it? the people. Yeah. I mean, like uh, Big J was there recording a special, and he was like, "Hey, where should we go eat?" And I was like, "I don't know. Is it 2001? <laughs> I can tell you where to go if it's 2001. 2024." <laughs> Who knows, Stubins? right? Stubins? <laughs> what else you got? I got uh, I got Joe Dumars from the Pistons. Now, Joe Dumars, unbelievable basketball player for oh, the really? Pistons, legend for the Pistons, then became their general manager. Cool. Won a championship in 04 with them as their general manager. Well, congrats to So you to might want to hold on to that All right, that, that's a good one. This is a Ronnie Grandison. Ronnie Grant from, from the, the Celtics. Celtics. I can't believe how short the short how short the shorts were. Well, those now. are back now. There are short shorts are back. That's crazy. Ronnie Grand Grandison. You know him? Dude, he played. Uh, he was the fifth round pick out of Denver with wow. the DU. It's pretty crazy. Didn't know a DU player got to the NBA. You're not. Can I just say this? Out of all the packs, uh-huh. you're getting ripped off. <laughs> a lot of people get like Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas. Where's that? Stuff? Patrick Ewing. This guy's getting Ronnie Grandison. I got Larry Drew from the Lakers, but I don't. I don't remember Larry Drew. I don't remember Larry Drew. Larry Drew Larry Drew sitting where we're going, damn. <laughs> I thought y'all remembered me. <laughs> he's, he's like in his 80s now. Or no, he's in his 60s now. He's like, damn. I'm a huge Dan Soda Louis Katz man. I've always been saying Louis like a South American hamster. <laughs> I got Jeff Malone, Carl's brother. Uh, I don't know if that is, but that's very funny to make that for the bullets. They had to change that name. <laughs> which which city is that? Washington D.C. <laughs> no way. No, they really did change it. Wow, because it was the murder capital of the world. And they're like, well, we can't be the bullets. We have to be the wizards. <laughs> it's so funny going from dangerous to nerdy <laughs> to magical. Actually, we're a mystical team. You're like, no, you guys were uh, the murder capital of the world. Lean into that. <laughs> we got Earl Curitan. That sounds made up. <laughs> Earl Curitan, all right, for the Charlotte Hornets. He's third-round pick out of Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, dude. Earl, you know what? A lot of these are great names that you should memorize, <laughs> just in case you want to give people false names. You're oh, like, something yeah, like I'm Earl. Kelly Trapuka? That's made up. Dude, you got the worst pack <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. This guy rules. Well, look, if you think, at first it looks like he's got the world's craziest mullet, but there's actually a person behind him in the picture. But doesn't it look Damn like it. he's got like a 10-pound mullet? It also looks like he has a nose grown out of his neck. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's a first-round pick, though. There you go. And by the way, put in the 1982 and 1984 NBA All-Star game. So, Trapuka, Kelly Trapuka. I know I'm mispronouncing that, but... Kelly's uh, a trip as a as a dude's name. I know yeah. there's, no, there's no more genders, but it still sounds weird to me. Yeah, Kelly? Yeah. You go, cool. What, do you want to kiss? <laughs> what, do you want to smooch? We can hold hands. We're <laughs> yeah. in Saudi Arabia. I'll hold your hand, <laughs> and I'll give you a smooch, but then I'll stone you if you're gay. <laughs> there's a great name, John Battle. Never heard of him, but That's I like it. That's a cool it. name. John Battle. You, I swear to God, out of Joe Dumars, I don't know anybody in this pack. John Battle, fourth round pick out of Rutgers, not bad. I got Kevin McHale. This is an All Star game. Now is that's that, big. Is it now? Kevin McHale was part of the Celtics. Their entire dynasty later became a big GM for the Timberwolves. Mm-hmm. It's an All Star card, so you know it's good. Kevin McHale is one of the best big men ever to play the game. Really? Yeah, you got to respect it. A lot of NBA, you know, he was like they win a championship because of him. Him, Bird, Danny Ainge. Big on the Celtics. We're going to hold on to this one. All right, good. Dave uh, Dave Cortezone. Dave Cortezone? Cortezone. Cor- Damn, dude. This is, I can't believe my dad played in the NBA phase. <laughs> First round pick out of UW, too. I mean, he was a Husky. 6'11", 255. That's a big boy coming at you. Look at that stash, dude. Dave Corzon. I bet he. Uh, I bet he's like a successful, like uh, something like a car dealer or how He's did probably they, got a good business. This guy looks like he rebounds and how takes is, his NBA money and puts how, it into something. How is Matt Johnson the only one who got gay AIDS? You think everyone would get AIDS with all that? I mean, there's probably oh, he was the only like one that they were, I mean, the NBA in the eighties, <laughs> dude. Fucking before AIDS. That's what I always say. If you want to travel through time, post pill, pre AIDS, the golden Shit. age of fucking. All you had to do was worry about creating life, not death. <laughs> <laughs> you said to be like, I don't know, maybe there's another, a kid coming into the world. Not like, fuck, I'm dead, you're dead. Everyone that fucking, Ugh. anyone that drinks my blood, 
dead. Yeah, I shouldn't have let all those people drink my blood. God, I'm <laughs> such a sucker for vampires. <laughs> vampires with AIDS came. They go, what do you mean? They're, what? Oh, there's a there's I'm a everlasting. S- what do you mean? <laughs> I, I can't drink. Well, the gay ones are too wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I like a wiggle. I like a straight man. You never there's a there's a um there's an old Saturday Night Live where it's like that during age where they have a vampire and he's like about to suck their blood. He's like and and they'll be like I like I recently took a trip to Haiti and he's like oh never mind. And it's funny. like it's like crazy. Yeah. What's crazy about AIDS and no one talks about this? We were so mean about it for yeah. so long that yes. they're like Reagan's like it doesn't even exist Four and they're like I'm dying. Of it. Yeah. He goes, eh, don't touch, don't share a milk. That's on 21 <laughs> Jump Street. They're like, you won't drink his milk because the guy had AIDS in the episode. It was crazy, man. Yeah. Who else you got? I got Michael Cooper for the Lakers. Do you remember him? I don't remember nope. him. Michael Cooper, third round pick, played for New Mexico. He was a Lobo. <laughs> Mark Eaton. That's yeah, an all star. That's, that's a big name. Good. He's a, you know, he's one of those, uh, those classic. Uh, played for the Utah ball Jazz. Handlers. He's a, he's a, uh, he was a, a couple of all star games, but yeah, Mark Eaton's a big one. I know Mark Eaton because when uh, Big J and I would play NBA 2K, we would you could play like um, street ball with NBA players, and then we would just do two teams of crusty white guys because you could go throughout history. So it'd be only white crusty players. It'd be so so many layups, so many layups and mid range jumpers. But Mark Eaton was always a big pick for me in the center. What I got, I got. Here's a good one. Winston Garland. What? <laughs> Winston Garland. That sounds like a mayor from the seventies. We go, Mayor Garland actually put that bridge up. <laughs> He's a second round pick out of Southwestern Missouri State. Played guard for Golden State. This was when I was still a Warriors fan. I loved the Warriors until they got rid of Tim Hardaway, and then I became a Nuggets fan. Really? So this is like a classic Golden Age. Golden a lot of this is when they played in o- Oakland. Oh yeah, San Francisco took them recently. Oh yeah, it wasn't isn't that very recent? Actually? Yeah, like yeah, within okay. the last ten years. You ever met a Winston? No. Ever- Winston? No, I've never met a Winston. You know who I met the other day? Who? A Chauncey. Chauncey Billups is my favorite NBA player of all time. Really, I didn't. I didn't know there were cha- many Chaunceys around. Well, I only know of Chauncey Billups, the king of Park Hill, possibly <laughs> the greatest guard ever to come out of Colorado. But that's just me. I've all, I always said the same thing. Yeah, you've always all you've right. echoed that all the time, Mister Big Shot. You call him that all the time. <laughs> and to close out, the brother, Carl Malone. <sighs> Man, when Carl Malone pops up, it's always a tough one because you know he had a baby with a twelve-year-old. What? You don't know that? No, I don't know anything about any of this shit. Damn, dude. Carl Malone's one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Widely believed that statutory rape a 13-year-old girl when he was in college. And then she had a baby, and that baby went to the NFL. This is the second time we've talked about this on. The baby went to the NFL? Yeah, the baby. As a baby? That's a, that's a big First baby. First baby ever in the NFL. <laughs> they said something about the loose bones made it harder to tackle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, dude you're one of my favorite human beings on the planet uh, you too man thanks this is for great. coming out thanks for having me check out louis katz's special out now on his youtube go watch it it's great he's one of the best joke writers he's fucking just hilarious i love it thanks yeah <laughs>